Hey there guys, it's Liger0459. I am here today with a game I haven't played in a while now. Um, not for about, what, a month and a half or something like that. I am back on Elite Dangerous. And actually, this is no longer beta. This is released. Uh, it released on the 12th of December. And uh, basically, from the last time I did a video, that was what, Beta 2, I believe? They did Beta 3 and then Gamma 1, which is basically the release candidate, and then Gamma 2. Um, and then uh, just released uh, last week. And so, um, yeah, if you would like to get this game, it's actually available for purchase. I'll put a link in the description. But um, anyway, what I'm going to be doing today is, is having a little fun. So I've been spending the last uh, about week and a half or so mining. Um, bought, a, bought a Viper. Well, I took my Free Eagle kitted that out, bought a Viper, bought a, uh, bought a Cobra, Cobra was my miner, Viper was my fighter, decided to sell the Cobra, and then kit out the, or sell the Viper, and kit out the Cobra in, uh, exploring gear, so I'm gonna be flying all the way over here today, let's and move down a little bit if it's a little bit weird movement it's because I'm actually moving using my my brand new flight stick and not my mouse and keyboard anymore but uh so from here though I'm gonna head down a little bit and then over here and end up at Alpha Centauri and Seoul I'm actually gonna hit Bernard Star coming in just because I've always wanted to go to Bernard Star probably I'm not sure if I want to just bounce around the side and go to Cirrus and then come into Seoul or hit Seoul first and then go to Cirrus. But either way, my end destination is going to be Seoul. So should be pretty fun. Um, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. We could talk as we go. But uh, anyway, like I said, this game is released. It's uh, It's really good, actually. It's gotten better since... Beta 2, the last time I did a video on it. Um, they've optimized it a lot more. The game runs pretty smoothly. Um, there's not many network problems anymore. They worked out most of their network issues during the... Uh, during the Gamma phase. Uh, there was one patch they did that completely broke the servers for a day. It was pretty bad. Disconnects every 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. But they've worked all that out and haven't been having those issues anymore. So, And the servers are actually under load now that there's multiple you know, people on than just the normal testers. So I would say they're doing a pretty good job because it stood up to the load. There was no post-release hiccups, if you will where the servers are too overloaded for anybody to play because you know that always happens with this kind of thing, right? So, I'd say they did a good job. Some of the improvements they've made, they made improvements to Super Cruise from the last time I played. Uh, when Beta 3 came out, which I didn't show, they added the Interdictor. The ability to be, well, you could always be Interdicted, I believe. They could Somebody could yank you out. But they added the ability for you to be yanked out of Super Cruise by either pirates or um, either pirates or federal security service to basically scan you, check if you have bounties, or you can buy an interdictor and do that to other people. So you can actually do piracy now. Personally, it's not my cup of tea, though. Not gonna lie. Here we go. First jump on the long journey. Now, I may not be into piracy though, but that's not saying I I don't know how to fight. I hope they won't pull that up right now, but uh, let's go ahead and real quick. Oh yeah, something else they added. Fuel scoop. Fuel scoop. Fuel scoop complete. So, basically they added the ability to scoop fuel from stars. Fuel scoop because at, at a certain point there was a an issue where, uh, you know, if you ran out of fuel you could just could just call for a a ship to come and it would uh wow really it's way out there mm, i kind of want to explore it and get that money but anyway i'm gonna head out here while i talk um 
So they added the ability to scoop fuel from stars because before if you ran out of fuel, you could just pop a distress beacon and you'd get fueled up for a cost. I mean, it cost you money, but uh, it kind of made it easy to just go out and not have to worry about fuel ever. So they made it so you actually have to you know, think about your jumps and be like, okay, well, I have enough fuel for like three more jumps. Let me look at my galaxy map and find a scoopable star because not all stars are scoopable. You know, if you hit a brown dwarf or you hit a... Uh, you know, a white dwarf or certain other ones, you won't be able to scoop fuel, so you have to pay attention. That kind of threw, threw an extra gameplay thing. Now, I do wish that they had some kind of distress beacon, and they probably will add it. People on the forums have been talking, people on Reddit have been talking, asking for things to be put in, because while the game is, while the game is playable, it still isn't feature complete, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, there's plenty of things that still are going to be done and that people would still like to be done that hopefully they'll be doing over the next couple months or so. I'll get into some of those a little bit later in the episode. But uh, by removing the Distress Beacon, they've kind of made it so where if you, even if you are planning pretty well and you happen to get a string of unscoopable stars and there's nothing within range to get across this string of unscoopable stars, you're kind of, you know, you're stuck. And once your fuel runs out, your power goes out. So then you have five minutes of oxygen left. And at the end of the five minutes, you die. So unless you upgraded your life support, in which case you have, you know, seven, seven minutes and 30 seconds or 15 minutes or whatever, which you're not going to bother waiting for the 15 minutes. You're just going to do this. Go over here, go to functions, go to the bottom and self-destruct because that's your only option. Yeah, kind of crappy, but hey, it is what it is, right? Um, I can't choose a faction right now. Mm -mm -mm. This isn't, nah, it's another two minutes away. That is one thing also that people have asked for, is right now, if there's multiple stars in a system, so like, let's go over here to the system map. Mm -mm. Oh, wow, well, that's a binary system actually, but cool. That no, okay, that was explored. Good. So this is a binary system over here on the far side, but as you can see, it was way far out there. So you have to super cruise all the way across the system to it, with no way to make it faster. Um. Yeah, you you're kind of at a bit of a disadvantage here. You're just kind of forced to go all the way this distance, no matter what you do. It just it is what it is right now. So people have been asking that, um, well, it's been suggested to Frontier, and hopefully this is what they do, because this makes the best sense. Um, micro jumps, because the way that this drive works, technically, there is no limitation on, like, being able to jump from, like, say, here to there, where that star is right now. As long as there's a sufficiently good targeting mechanism on the other side, whether that's a nav beacon that is putting off a signal that you can lock onto, or a gravity well that you can jump into, like when you come into a system and you jump into the star, um, you should be able to jump to that target, at least according to the technology. It just hasn't been done in game yet. So, the idea is, you put down a nav beacon when you first explore. So like, I'm going out here for the first time, and I'm gonna actually get these stars explored. I could drop a nav beacon and give people the ability to then, if they ever come into the system and they want to go to the other side, they can micro jump from the initial star to the nav beacon I laid. I get a special bonus for laying the nav beacon, so that gives exploring a little bit more of a job because, you know, you actually get to help people out by exploring um, and not just get system, give system data and it makes it a little bit easier on the average player who is you know just going to be trading or trucking around uh commodities or something like that and doesn't really want to spend like i'm doing you know four minutes flying across a system in an effort to uh scan the distant star or just get to a station in general i mean heck i'll show you at alpha centauri when we go by there but hud on orbital is in pretty much unreasonable distance away from the initial star and it, I mean, it's so far away that you just 
if you get a mission there, just you just reject it. There's no reason to take it because it's going to take you, I believe, an hour and a half at full speed in Super Cruise to get there. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. So, they'll work that out. I have faith in Frontier. They haven't done us wrong yet. I will say the only thing that they've done wrong with this game so far is the fact that they did release it now. Because, like I said, while it's playable, it's not feature complete. So, they kind of, in all honesty, they kind of put it out a little bit early in an effort to beat Christmas. So that they could get the money from Christmas sales as people buy this for kids or family members or, you know, friends or what have you. Because, I mean, if I knew somebody in my family other than me, like Space Sims, I would probably get this for him. Heck, I'm considering getting it for my little brother. Because I know he likes this kind of thing and he would probably play it. So, good business, good business sense in a way, but at the same time bad for the game itself. Because there's a possibility, and this is just, you know, conjecture of me and the the reddit gurus i guess you could say who have been playing since beta one uh, and possibly alpha before that but uh we kind of run the risk of uh alienating people who would have bought it and continued playing um but now decide not to worry about it because the game is not feature complete right now and they they'll kind of feel without for lack of a better word, gypped, you know. It's like you buy this game and you're like, well, there's no real multiplayer yet. I'll get into that later too. Um, there's no ability to do this. It, You know, Super Cruise is, is long and arduous right now. And, you know, why is this like that? You know, you have a lot of that. But I feel like at the same time it was a good idea because... They will gain a lot of a lot of fans from this. They will gain a lot of people who want to continue to play the game, watch the game, will be willing to maybe buy uh, buy ship skins and stuff like that to continue putting money into the ecosystem so they can continue working, continue to sing the praises of this game so that more people will continue to buy it and will give them time and the money they need to implement the rest of the features they plan and want to. Um, there's a design document out there somewhere. I don't know where exactly. I've heard about this design document. I haven't read this design document. That's a brown dwarf. That's useless. I can't scoop you. I was going to, but I can't. Um, yeah, there's a design document out there somewhere, supposedly. I haven't read it. I haven't found it yet. Uh, it's probably on the forums. Frameshift drive charging. That kind of lists out all their plans right now. I'll probably read it and do kind of a just one video when I'm flying just kind of talk about it a little bit that way y'all can get a kind of overview of what is planned for the game so if you're interested in it you don't get get bored or decide not to do it I think that'll be the only system I fully explore on the way by the way at this point, I am because I want to try and do this whole set of jumps in. Oh, holy crap! 160. Fuel scooping complete. Wow, 190 something. That's a fuel crazy fuel scoop. Disengaged. Anyway, I kind of want to do this whole trip in one or two episodes, if possible two max which is I've got another 15 minutes for this one so oh this one's already explored I think all the way let's see yep nothing frame shift drive charging I think before I jump each time I'll fire off the advanced discovery scanner that'll fully ping the system and get everything in the system at least um and off camera on my way back, I'll probably stop and explore and get the detailed stuff. That way I can get the extra money. And I'm pretty sure this route has been traveled before, so I'm not going to get a whole lot of cash for it. Not like if I was going to the Galactic Center, where not a lot of people have been. 
which I also plan to make that trip too, but um, that one's a bit longer. Ran the math on that, and it would take about mm, somewhere like seven, eight, nine days of uh, playing to to get there, and that is like playing three or four hours a day. Um, I think it was like 19 hours total to jump to Sagittarius A star, which let me fire this off first, and then I'll show you Sagittarius A star. So, right now we're in one of the arms, as you can see. Sagittarius A star is, uh, you can't see my mouse actually on the screen, can you? Nope, you can't. Sagittarius A star is in here, so let's zoom down in. Mm -mm -mm. So, it's dense. It's really dense in here. A lot of systems. A lot of places to explore. Uh, but there's no way I'm going to find it manually here. So let's go over to navigation and type it in. Uh, Sagittarius star. Oh, yep. See, I'm not even quite right. There it is. Sagittarius A star. That is the dead center of the galaxy. That is the supermassive black hole that is in the center of our galaxy. And yes, supposedly somebody's been there before. There's already a video of it, but I want to go there just for shits and giggles. As you can see, that's uh, 25,000 light years. I'll give you the numbers if you want to run the math yourself and double check mine. Um, so just go ahead and round it up to 26,000 because depending on where I am, I could add another couple hundred. I could add another couple hundred light years to that. Um, Friendship drive so at, go for 26,000 light years at. I, I, personally, I estimated about 30 to 40 seconds to jump. You see, you saw how fast I could scoop fuel. So as long as it's a star I can scoop fuel from, it'd be pretty fast. I'm imagining I fire off the advanced discovery scanner as I'm scooping the star. It takes 15 seconds to fire off. Maybe have to go all the way around the star to jump again. So 30 seconds. Makes sense. Um, 45 if you want to get buffer. And then from there, uh, you take that number. That is... Actually, sorry, I missed a. I actually missed a step there. My bad. Um, step one is to take the twenty-six thousand and divide it by. I think I did ten, because that's the average jump range of most people. Like, let's fire this off. Nothing. Okay. Uh, I think I did ten because that's the average jump range. Mine is eleven. If I strip down all the way. Uh, so yeah, 10 works, 10.5, I'd go. Uh, so you divide 2600 by 10.5. There we go. And then you take that number, if I can get my calculator to pull up. 10.5, take that number, you multiply it by 45 seconds. Okay. And then you take that. Now that's the number of uh, seconds it would take to make all the jumps that I calculated by dividing by 10.5. Because that's how many jumps it would have taken me. Divide that by 60 to go to minutes. Divide by 60 to go to hours. You should get 30.95 hours. Um, again, at 5 hours a day, that is, you know, 6 days. Pretty much 7 hours a day. Uh, pretty much seven days, I mean. Um, if you happen to be able to fly for longer than that, I guess you could go further or do it faster, but most times you won't be able to, you know, play more than five hours a day because work. Oh. 20,000. Wow. That is far away. Frameshift drive charging. But, uh, yeah, so I think that'll be a trip that I'd make over the course of uh, about a month or so with a friend of mine, Sherlock. I think you've seen Sherlock on some of my videos before. Um, I think we're planning to make that trip, and we're going to probably explore along the way, too. So, to probably, that's why it'll take a month.
Oh, brown dwarf. Unscoopable. Not bad. So, yeah. You can look forward to that. That'll be a nice long video series if I do that. What, 30 hours, 30 minutes a piece? 31 hours, 30 minutes a piece. That's, you know, 62 videos ish yeah so okay continuing on while I keep making these jumps but got a little sidetracked talking about the Sagittarius A star um where was I talking about I oh, yeah, improvements they're gonna make um I spoke briefly about multiplayer a little earlier they the game is all multiplayer it, it is all multiplayer from like the absolute get go and i'm not coming out of hyperspace that means i'm having a problem connecting to the server actually hmm. Hmm, disappointing that happens sometimes Unfortunately, if that happens, then, uh, oh wait, there we go. Cool. You can't hit the menu when that happens either, so you're just kind of stuck in hyperspace until you either finish or you force quit the game. Oh, hey, look at that. Three new astronomical objects found. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so the game is multiplayer from the ground up. It that's just kind of what this game is, but. Drive it's not really social multiplayer, if you know what I mean. Um, there's no real way to group up right now. That's coming in January, they say. Which, you know, it's right around the corner. But that's kind of one of those examples of um, releasing a little too early. So, uh, right now, you can kind of fly with people. I've mined this show before. Um, we traveled together a couple times, we're making jumps in semi-tandem, just kind of, you know, timing it ourselves and, and talking over team speak. but, uh, if we wanted to go fight or something like that, we wouldn't be able to share bounties, whoever got the last hit still gets the kit, or still gets the money, and no kind of sharing on loot, basically, so hopefully the introduction of, uh, wings is what they'll be called, will solve some of those problems, because... I really do want to play with friends, but there's no real way and or reason to. So, it's just kind of, you're there with your friends flying around, doing sort of kind of separate things, because you can't quite interact with each other, yeah. Also, the game seems a little bit sparse right now in terms of people, but that's because, you know, 400 billion star systems, right? If you're not in a core system, you're not really going to see a whole lot of people. I saw a bunch of people in the system I started out in, uh, Umantis, because that has a pristine, uh, pristine ring system, and people tend to congregate at pristine ring systems because they're good for mining. Uh, Fire off the scanner. Yeah, there we go. Um. Whoa, 92,000 light seconds? Whew, goodness gracious. That's why I'm not exploring anymore on this trip. Frameshift drive charging. I wonder how far out I am, actually. Wow, I still have a ways to go. But, uh... Yeah. Shoot. And now I don't remember where I am again because stars in 92,000 light seconds distracted me completely and totally. Um, wings, multiplayer, flying around with people. Yes, that's what I was talking about. So, you know, you can fly around with people, but you're not really doing anything with them in the, you know, MMO sense of the word. And again, like I said, that'll hopefully be fixed soon. In my opinion, not soon enough, because that'll make this game fun and even more fun. Whoa, 32 astronomical objects. 
Uh, there's a couple asteroid belts. Um, there's a couple stations. And another star. Wow, okay. Man, I can't wait to come back and explore these systems. Those will be worth a lot of money. I'm sure some of these have places that have never been discovered yet by anybody, and so that's even more money. And I like money, just saying. Total on this Cobra is over, uh, over a million and a half credits. Mm, I think total this Cobra has cost me 2.3 million credits. Yeah. Because there's the Cobra itself, and then I, uh, I kitted it out with really good, like, mining stuff at first, and then put the advanced discovery scanner on it, which is a million, 1.25 million by itself. Actually, it's 1.5 million, um, or 4 or 5 million, something like that. It's 1.5 million, pretty much, credits. And then... So what that, with 300,000 of the Cobra itself, plus the 1.5 million, that's, I'm up to 1.7 something, 1.8 ish. Another 250 for the detailed surface scanner, and now I'm at 2 mil, you know, upgraded the lasers, upgraded the life support, upgraded the, uh, I think I upgraded the, what else? Power distributor, maybe? So, this is an expensive ship right now. If I can find a station, I probably should. Like, if I can find another station and see if I can sell some of this and get back above my uh, rebuy price. Because I am below my rebuy price. If I get destroyed, I'm going to lose a lot. right oh there it is see the balance on the left side and then the rebuy cost underneath it so yeah I have to have above that otherwise I have to pay a little bit of a, I get a loan which there's only a limited amount of to try and rebuy it if I get destroyed and um yeah if you can't make up the cost then you lose your ship and everything that was on it and you start back in a sidewinder with um the money you have right then so for me, that would be starting back in the Sidewinder with uh, 500,000 or 50,000 credits, which is cool. I mean, 50,000 credits isn't bad, but uh, going from a cool million to 50,000 credits, that would hurt. That's that's reason to rage quit for a while, in all honesty. And I probably would actually rage quit, that is. Okay, so while we're still jumping, let's talk about some things that they're going to well, plan on doing. The things that I know. Um, we already talked about the wings. Um, right now, the game's pretty balanced. There's still some stuff that they plan on doing. Some better balancing and trading. Some better balancing on mining. Possibly improving mining because it can be tedious right now. And really based on luck a lot of the time. Um, you just kind of rip rocks off of... Uh, off of asteroids and hope that you get decent stuff to drop and if not you fly to the next asteroid and do the same and you rinse and repeat until you get a full you know cargo hold which you know for something like the cobra could be uh, oh I took off my slots but I had you know, 36 slots I think it was um, my eagle I had 10 so you know you try and you could be mining for an hour you know and fill up your finally fill up your hold. It could be a good haul. I mean, platinum is eighteen thousand a pop, but you know, takes you an hour and a half for two hundred thousand credits. Sometimes, sometimes you get really, really lucky and you get, you know, two thousand, three thousand credits, three hundred thousand credits in an hour. It's very uh, 
very luck based, we'll say that. Not really skill based or anything you can do to improve your chances. Besides going to a pristine metallic set, uh, ring set. I cannot speak tonight. Whoa. How do I fire off that and not... Oh. oh, it's lagging. Okay, never mind. Um, a lot of the things with this game do require it to either generate data on the server or pull data from the server. The fact that it took so long means the star, those planets probably have never been found before, and it actually had to generate the data, which is why it took so long. Um, interesting to say the least. But it can slow your game down as you go further and further out because it has to generate new data for all those systems. Um, it also can cause some interesting problems because, uh, like, the refinery that you put your, your metals in requires a connection to the server. And if that errors, then you can't refine anything. And any rocks that may be floating around when you have to relog because you have to relog will disappear because unless there's people there the instance will cease to exist kind of sucks and the rock you were just firing on will change too so it kind of sucks yeah had it happen unfortunately wish i hadn't had it happen but i've had it happen i had it happen yesterday but fortunately show was with me in that instance so uh, when I relogged, all my stuff was still there, so I could pick it up, and it was like 30%. The first time it happened to me, it was 30% platinum that was dropping out of this rock. You know, that's... You get on average like 10, 11 pieces off, you know. That's... If I got 10, that's 300%. Uh, if it was consistent, if it's 11, it's, you know, 30, or 310, maybe 320 you know, with the percentages adding on to, uh, multiply, so that's, what, three stacks, multiply that by 18,000, 19,000 pretty much, and that's how much money I lost from that, that bug, so, yeah, there will be times where you will want to probably rage quit, because you're like, you know what, I just lost a whole bunch of money, I don't feel like dealing with this right now. But in all honesty, you'll probably come back and keep playing. I haven't rage quit yet. Not really. I think I accidentally dropped my cargo yesterday while I was in the uh, in the asteroid belt still, because my cargo drop button was bound to my. Am I gonna slow down in time? There we go. Cool. Got a nice swing. Um, my cargo drop button was bound right next to my button to raise lower my landing gear and raise lower my uh, cargo scoop which I've since gotten rid of that button bind because who needs to jettison all their cargo at once anyway suffice to say I didn't notice that I dropped it all I get back to the station I go to the commodities market expecting to sell I think it was like four things of platinum two of purple no two or three of palladium which is 13 thousand some change a piece and some gold I think two things of gold which is nine thousand a piece um, and it was empty completely empty so kind of had a moment like what the fuck do I do right now because that was the money I needed to you know finish off equipping this Cobra to go uh, and explore and it's like now I gotta go mine again I'm probably not gonna get that lucky again and yeah there, you'll have moments like that you get dragged out of in out of super cruise by a by a pirate and it's an anaconda and you get one shot it yeah don't worry it can happen
I don't really like it when numbers disappear like that. That is another bug. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to real quick take a break here and come back next episode and continue on to Soul. There's plenty more to talk about, of course. So, I will see y'all soon. Till next episode, game on.